All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this, let's see, HP Envy X360 M convertible model 15M-ES1013DX. All right, really long model. Anyways, we're going to be using a T5 Torx 5 and a JAS1 screwdriver. We might also need a JAS0, but for now, these are the two we're going to be using. All right, we are going to have to peel off these rubber feet because they are hiding screws. Uh, in most cases on these HP laptops, it's hiding JS1 screws. All right, I just used my fingernail at the little edge of the rubber piece, and then I kind of just pull on it to peel it up. I just recently cut my nail, so let's see here. Okay, come on, peel that up. Wow, also the weather is cold, so the adhesive is pretty um, stiff right now. Okay, so you can see we can peel this up. Make sure that you're peeling the adhesive and not the rubber piece. Okay, as you can see, there's this clear shiny layer um, that's adhesive or that's the adhesive strip. Sometimes the adhesive separates from it. As you can see this, actually, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. You can see the adhesive, some of it sticks. Um, but the reason you want to peel the clear layer is, as you can see, it can separate from the rubber piece. And uh, if you're just peeling the rubber piece, then the rubber piece will stretch. So you want to peel the clear piece, not the rubber piece, okay? And right now the rubber piece is the one that's going. But again, you want to try and peel the clear one if you can. Actually, in this case, they made the rubber shoot. They made the clear one also stretch. That's not good. So I'm going to have to actually cut this here and then overlap it. So this adhesive kind of, they changed the design to not be very good, okay? So this, I'm gonna just fold this down here, okay? And then lay this on top of it. All right, and there we go. We got the adhesive strip off. Okay, we'll set that aside. You can see two screws here. All right, we're gonna peel this one out as well because I'm pretty sure they're hiding screws under there. It could be possible that they aren't, but you never know. All right, so let's go ahead and peel that up. Okay, oh, yep, there's hidden screws under there. And as you can see, it kind of didn't peel right. I'm gonna use a small flathead screwdriver to get underneath the adhesive here if I can, and try and peel that up. Okay, and we'll get underneath there. Okay, you can see how bad that is. All right, I'm going to separate the adhesive from the rubber piece because it's not peeling, right? And then this one, you can see if I pull this this clear piece, the adhesive, the whole rubber strip comes up with it. And actually, never mind, it's also stretching here. <laughs> okay, so normally if you pull the clear adhesive part, it's not supposed to be able to stretch. But whatever they use, they use some now worse quality stuff that it stretches. So I guess I'm going to have to cut the thing now that it's going like that. So cut it like that. And I'll use some tweezers to kind of try and keep it flattened a little bit. And then, um, actually I do need to peel this up. Uh -oh, it's gonna stick back. It's a terrible design. <laughs> okay, I don't know whose idea this was, but fire them. <laughs> All right, let's peel this up. I don't know, HP probably likes that they're doing this because that means when you take it apart, you can tell that someone took it apart because the adhesive isn't going to be completely normal. Okay, anyways, we'll set aside this one. You can see what, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, I guess that adhesive peeled itself off as well and did some weird stuff. But uh, Okay, we'll stick that back down and we'll get that out of the way. All right. Anyways, uh, back to the JAS1 screwdriver that I was talking about. There are four screws. We're going to remove those four. This computer is having issues booting. It looks like a bad hard drive, so we are going to be replacing the hard drive with an SSD, reinstalling Windows on it, and then um, basically seeing if we can migrate the data. If I can't migrate the data, then for the customer, they're going to have to send the hard drive to a data recovery place. Um, but yeah, all right. And also keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern. I remove them. We're going to now switch to the T5 or Torx 5. 
All right, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so we got those out. Now the tricky part, because this one doesn't have any nice places to start prying the cover up. Let's try a suction cup real quick. I don't think it's going to come out. Yeah, nope. I probably need a smaller one. Oh, actually pulling at the center, it did pop something a little bit. I can actually feel, you can hear that clip coming up. Okay. So let's see if we can kind of get under here because when I pull it, it forms a little gap. But I'm probably going to have to use my metal pry tool to do this. Yeah, this one is not wanting to go. And also, since I cut my fingernails, this is way worse. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't want to come out at all, it seems. Okay, so we're going to use this metal tool here. It's very thin, super thin. Um, you can also, of course, use plastic pry tools or guitar picks, whatever works for you. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this started anywhere. It's not looking like it. Start from back here. I'm going from back here where the hinge is and pulling up on that. And that's also not coming up. And sliding the tool back here, it looks like nothing is coming out. Let's try this side. Pull on it, get the tool back here. And you can see I can slide this tool in, but there's no clips disengaging. So I don't know. That's not a very good design. I don't know where to start prying. Maybe there's a secret. I don't know. Okay, let's start from the middle here. And actually, that's working. Okay, so you can see now I can kind of pull with my fingernails, and, uh, my fingers, and push down with my thumb to make a gap. I'm going to slide the tool as I continue doing that and see if we can kind of pop. Sometimes you have to wiggle the tool, but the problem is you can't insert the tool too far or you might break something inside. So I'm just barely getting the tool in and then kind of just seeing if I can pop a clip in there. Okay, so... There we go. We got the whole front. We're going to rotate it now to the side. And same thing, I'm going to kind of hold it, pushing to keep pressure on the clips. And then we're going to try and just go in there, and there we go. All right, so it seems like the best way is you get to where the clip is, and then you pry it like this way towards the center, so it pushes the outside away from the clips. At least that's what worked on that clip. <laughs> the rest... Oh my god, this design. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to the other side, see if we can do the same thing. Oh, this already popped out on its own. <clears throat> so we got most of the sides and this front piece out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the center and I'm going to push up to kind of flex the case this way. And sometimes that helps where I can kind of push the case in towards the center like that. And there we go. Okay. So basically, while pulling up here, I pushed on this to kind of flex it more, and then it went out like that. And here you can see what the bottom of the cover looks like. I don't know what you would want to see that for, but just in case. All right, let's set that aside. You can see on this model, they only have one fan, though some models will have two. They put a plastic thing here in its place. Their hard drive is bad. It looks like we're going to have to replace it with a uh, SSD here. Um, it's actually not a hard drive. It's an SSD. Okay. We got one screw here. We're going to take that screw out. Um, some people are probably going to say, why aren't you removing the battery first for the hard drive and the RAM? As long as the computer is off, make sure the computer is off. Okay. Then you should be perfectly fine taking the hard drive out. You can see it's off right now. Okay. But if you want, you can also disconnect the battery here. Um, the battery also acts as the CMOS BIOS battery, so I don't want to remove that because then it will reset the BIOS settings. Battery model number is BN03XL, right? There's a few screws holding it in place. They actually have arrows pointing to where the screws are, okay? <clears throat> um, speakers here with the cable running across. Then you got the other end connected to the motherboard there. Keyboard backlight connector is right there. Keyboard connector is right there. Um, this is probably for the touchpad or trackpad. Um, yep, T-pad. Battery, this is fingerprint sensor cable, it looks like. Um, and then the wireless card here, it has this little plastic tab 
glued or held in with double stick tape. If you want to remove the antennas, you go from the tail end after you remove this, obviously, and then you can pop them off. Uh, one screw, it'll pop the back up and you can pull it out. You'll see it'll be like the SSD. Then you got this cable here, most likely for touchscreen or something, um, or the webcam. There's a flip latch underneath this piece of adhesive. You'd have to peel that up and then flip that latch up. Then you can pull that cable back. <clears throat> Then you have the cable here for the LCD LVDS connector. If you're going to mess with this, be very sure that you disconnected the battery, open the laptop, and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. If you don't do that, there's a very good chance you're going to completely fry your computer. Right? Then you got this little cable button here. I think that's for the power button, right? What is that? It's not a power button cable. I don't know what that cable is going into um it's going into this tiny board it could be one of those um connectors that can tell you when the screen is opened or closed or flipped all the way back um i don't know what that kind of sensor is called but yeah all right then we got this slot or this little cover here that's for the ram so we're gonna be opening that up and checking the type of ram we are gonna have to peel this out so the ssd uh, maybe if we can open that first, I don't know, but it looks like there's adhesive holding that down. Okay, so let's see. Now that we remove the screw, you can see I can lift this up. Okay, and oh, okay, it comes out completely. There's a thermal pad in here. Okay, and I kind of had to even it out. But here you can see the SSD is connected to the RAM slot box here. I'm going to get underneath here if I can with my fingernails. This little box and pop this up just like that okay um and we don't want to peel all the way up because the adhesive there so we're just going to go around the front and sides and pop that up and oh there's adhesive here as well so i'm going to peel a little bit of this just so i can open this box side or like a pizza box kind of way um, there are also clips under this way so you will have to kind of lift it okay and I'm going to get my finger under there and push down here to pop those clips. Okay. Just like a lever. There we go. And there we go. And now you can see we got this open. Here's the RAM. There's two slots. You can pull these two tabs to the side. Pops up like that. Then you can pull this out. This is 4 gigs PC4 3200 AA. You should be fine with any PC4 3200 AA RAM. Um, if you want, you can get two 16 gigs to have 32 gigs total. I don't know why they put... It looks like two four gigs that's barely anything uh, but anyways here you can see the hard drive or ssd we can go ahead and pull this up slightly then we grab this and then we can kind of wiggle and pull it out this is it until obtain this is here you can see pcie nvme something model mz vlq 256b so i don't know what type of ssd this is but it failed other than it being a m m.2 and pcie and vme all right i'm gonna go get a 500 gig ssd to put in here and i'll be back see you guys in a bit all right i'm back so we have this crucial p3 that we're gonna replace it with crucial does have like newer faster models um i think they have a p4 p4 plus p5 or something like that i don't know higher performance ones but uh this is already faster than what was already in there and the customer isn't really saying they want like extreme performance they kind of just want it repaired at a good price so we're gonna use this okay we'll pop that out we'll get the new ssd in just get it lined up okay at an angle like this then we just push that in okay and then let that drop down it should be resting behind this so this screw, if you have this SSD out too far, it'll hit on top of there. So make sure that it's all the way in so that it can't wiggle like side to side. All right, next thing we're gonna just flip this back down and close all this up. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, we don't need this stuff now. And make sure the little tricky part is make sure all these little clips line back up. Okay, it's very important. And you do have to lift up the backside here as well. So I'm kind of rotating it to make the backside lift up and not just get caught on all those clips back there. Okay, then we can go ahead and push this down into the clips. Push that down 
to clip that all into place. And there we go. Then we just get this back on top. Swing it down. Good. You can push the adhesive down, if you, or not the adhesive, the thermal pad down if you want. And then we'll get this screw back in. There's not really much else to show here. The CPU is soldered to the motherboard. If you have to ask, then no, there's no way you can upgrade the CPU. Um, but if you know, sometimes there's special tools that you can actually do that. But it won't be worth the cost or effort. So let's go ahead now and put the bottom cover back on. So pretty simple, straightforward to get to that. Okay. And I think I already went over everything else that's in here. So yeah. All right. Let's get the bottom cover and put it back together. And then we're going to have to work on this. All right. So we'll get this back lined up and then you just kind of push it around the edges to clip everything back in make sure it clips in all around okay just like that make sure the middle clips in as well and here we go then we'll get the four screws back in <clears throat> and then we'll have to reinstall the os using a windows uh, USB installer. But uh, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. And also, if you can't do any of that, um, just leave some comments in the video. Um, don't do random comments. Make sure it has something to do with the video because um, YouTube will kind of flag them as like spam or something or yeah. So anyways, that's pretty much it. I am going to power it up and then boot from the USB just so you guys can see. I do need to check if the customer wanted me to put Windows 10 or 11. I don't know if it supported both or if they wanted a specific one. I think they wanted me to put Windows 11, but anyways. Let's get this all lined up. Okay, lined up. Just like this. Okay. And also, this adhesive kind of sucks. It's not very good at being reused, but it is what it is. Okay, this one, I'm looking at the bottom where the screw holes were. So I know which one was where, so I can put it back the same way, if you're wondering. Okay. And usually I like to start on one side and then start the other side, so that way it meets in the middle. And that way any slack, you can kind of push it all together. Okay, and that's it. Let's flip this over. Hopefully they had some battery life left in it. And I'm going to now, let me get the USB boot this with I think Windows 11 right oh that's my Windows 10 one okay so we'll get the Windows 11 drive we'll plug this USB stick in open it up power it on and we'll be pressing I believe it was F9 to go to the boot menu so we'll press F9 Oh, operating system boot mode changed. Here you can see. I don't know when the boot mode was changed. Anyways, 6031, enter. And then F9, F9, F9. Come on. There we go. So we can see we can boot from the SanDisk Cruiser. I'm going to press enter. And we're going to be starting the Windows 11 install. Um, it's a very basic Windows install. Nothing really special to show here. Um, other than the fact that I can do a local uh, OS install, so I don't have to have internet to do it. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. If you need help on how to do that, I do have a video of that as well. Um, if you don't want to use a Microsoft account with your install. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.